Hello friends, this video on human health and diseases part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next disease is amoebiasis or amoebic dysentery. So let us look at the pathogen which causes amoebiasis or amoebic dysentery. So the pathogen is a protozoa again and it is entamoeba histolytica. So this is the specific pathogen which causes amoebic dysentery. Now what happens in this, I mean how do this pathogen enter inside the body of human beings? So it generally enters through contaminated food and drinking water but it also has a transmitting agent involved and what is the transmitting agent? It is housefly. Now how housefly acts as a transmitting agent is it is nothing but a mechanical carrier of the uh, pathogen. So what it does is these parasites, the protozoa I mean, so the parasites are present in the feces of the infected person. So now what happens is this housefly will carry the parasites from the feces and then it will carry it to the food of a normal person. So let us suppose this is the parasite. This The parasite is present in the feces somewhere here. Now if this is the housefly, so the housefly will sit on the feces and it will take the parasite, carry the parasite and again when it sits on the food of another person, so it can actually transmit the parasite to this food. So the food becomes contaminated. Now when this person eats this cake, so the cake actually has the pathogen in it and as a result the person will suffer or the person will get infected with entamoeba histolytica. Now this transmission can take place not only through drinking water and food, uh, it can also be contaminated, transmitted through dirty hands or objects or anal oral contact because here this type of uh, pathogen is mostly found in the feces. So therefore uh, con if the food or drinking water somehow gets contaminated with the feces then that can become a source of infection. So now what happens once it enters inside the body, it primarily affects the large intestine. Now we all know what is large intestine responsible for. Now large intestine partially helps in digestion but one of its most important job is to the uh, is ejection. That is removal of the undigested matter out of the body. So that is also a, a primary function of this uh, large intestine. So now when this pathogen affects the large intestine then what happens is that there are issues with the so the symptoms which you see will be with the ejection process. So even though you are able to digest the food to some extent but the process of ejection that is removal of the undigested food doesn't happen in a proper way. So let us look at the symptoms which will tell it more clearly. Now some of the symptoms are abdominal cramps in the lower abdomen where your large intestine is located stools with blood and mucus. Now stools are something which are related to the process of ejection. What is ejection? The unjust, undigested food will come out in the form of stools or feces whatever you call it. So these stools are generally accompanied with blood and mucus. Constipation. Now treatments as I said see they are all related to the process of ejection. That is because large intestine is involved here. Now how do we treat this? Okay, now when you say blood, from where do we get this blood? From where this blood comes in the stools? Now, the blood actually comes when the pathogen invades the lining of the large intestine. So as I said, the pathogen will directly impact the large intestine. So when it starts tearing up the lining of the large intestine, so that tearing of the lining will release blood. So the blood will come out through the stools. Now, in many cases, this amoeba also enter the bloodstream and reach other organs like liver so it can cause damage to other organs like liver also. How do we treat it? Treat it with anti-amoebic drugs for intestine and liver because these are the organs which primarily get impacted during amoebic dysentery and also a good care need to be taken to ensure clean water, clean food, personal hygiene, 
and uh, there should be no flies on food and that is why it is often said that before you start eating you should always wash your hands you should always ensure that the food is well covered so that flies or you know, other insects do not come and sit on them because when a fly sits on your food you never know from where that fly has come maybe the fly would have come from somebody's feces or stools and it is carrying some pathogen with it so it is extremely unhygienic to keep food uncovered because that exposes you to many diseases. So cleanliness is a must for cure and prevention as well. So if you talk about cleanliness and maintaining hygiene, it is true for all infectious diseases because in all of them you saw that you can do a lot about preventing all of them because most of them are caused by uh, germs that is microorganisms or through flies or mosquitoes and we can protect ourselves against all of them. At least we can try to protect ourselves. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.